So here's my expanded poster of the uh, yogic, yogic view of reality. And this is how to get there, which is basically we're trying to calm the little blue minefield in the middle of this picture that is uh, essentially full of vibrations. It's a, like a lake with waves on it. And we want to calm the waves and make it calm down. Well, how do we do that? There's a certain amount of, of these various structures of ego that are built up in the ever-present now. And they're called uh, uh, Chitta and Vritri. And, and they're, they, they basically are, Chitta is the lake, and Vitri are the waves or whirlpools in that lake that are disturbing your view of Samadhi. Well, or the ever-present now. So how do we calm the lake? Well, first of all, you have to first realize that all these past egos have, over time, built up and are now creating their own problems or sufferings. And in the uh, Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, those sufferings are ignorance, a closed mind, adversion or felt antipathy, a split self, and clinging to life. These are the, these are the, the constant sufferings that your ego is going to drag along with you into the ever-present now. These are old representations of your ego that are left in the pond, sort of brewing around as a, as a, a rough sea, so to speak. And there's also nine hindrances in terms of getting that pond to quiet down. And that is disease, lethargy, self-doubt, impatience, fatigue, overindulgence, which is a lot of us do, and ignorance and inability. So with the hindrances and with the rough minefield created by past egoic energy in the present, you definitely come down here right to this point where it says daily inner practice or inner daily practice. And you say, well, how do we get to the calm lake? Well, we get there by practicing the eight limb path of physical habits to calm the lake and dissolve obstacles and hindrances. Well, how do we do that? Well, the, that's what the yoga postures are all about. Those postures and being with a group of people, doing those postures together is a, creates a, um, a, a calming, a calming of the waters. And so does the Om chant. The Om chant is a vibratory state that has been shown to affect the uh, coherence of the heartbeat and the coherence of thoughts in the mind. And by coherence, it means regularity. Or um, if you can think of something as trying to seek a level point of vibration, and that's what it does. And then there's uh, like meditation, which you've heard about. And some people, you know, pay a great deal of money to get a mantra in meditation. And mantras are basically adjusted to your uh, sympathetic uh, physical vibration, which is almost like music. Um, so you would want to tune into a mantra that really is meaningful and and brings feeling and peace to you. So you could probably check them, check them, check a few of them out without paying a thousand bucks for a mantra. Anyway, um, intentional music and dance uh, does the same thing. It calms, calms the, the lake. Breathing exercises, breathing is very important. Creativity of all kinds, very easy one to do. Anything creative will calm the lake. And Gratitude. Gratitude's really important. I mean, if you're not, if you're always tied up in this, in this overindulgence and, and um, impatience loop, you're never going to feel gratitude towards anything that's coming at you or being given to you. 
and you won't even notice when someone gives you something really important. Gratitude's very important, and gratitude and compassion are very important. Ledgers for the mind. And, and then there's the pranas. Information, you know, I, I, this is a big one because a lot of people spend a lot of time on the internet filling their mind with, with energy, uh, negative energy, positive energy, making the sea rough for meditation and calming. Uh, basically, the, 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 to calm the waters, you have to take care in the information you choose to put into your mind. You have to take care of the food that you put into your body. You have to take care of the water that you put into your body. And you have to take care of the sex that you partake in. And you have to take care of the air that you breathe and how you breathe it. And what does that do when you do, well, pick three of these things and start doing them regularly every day? What you basically do is balance your parasympathetic and your sympathetic nervous systems. That's the fight or flight mode, or the at peace mode, or the, or the uh, quiet mode. So the energetic body, by doing these things, the energetic body becomes balanced. And as the energetic body becomes balanced, the physical body becomes balanced. When the physical body becomes balanced, then the lake starts to calm of its own sort. You are attracted to things that want the lake to be calm. And so you have to practice a certain amount of, you know, you have to, you have to weave, you have to weave through the, 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 the life. Uh, and to do that, you're given a certain amount of self-restraint so, so that you can socially cohere with the people around you. Nonviolence, compassion, truthfulness, and clarity of personality. Non-stealing and respect for others. Sharing and equanimity and indifference to evil. And the indifference to evil doesn't mean indifference to evil. It means something else. And I'll explain to that in a detail later when I explain what evil is described as, as in the I Ching.